So, I mean, it makes sense that there would be, there are sightings here. Why wouldn't there be sightings out there? You know, I, I just, it's not my area of expertise. I don't dig into, I look into the phenomenon and if it leads me to an astronaut, great. And, and if not, you know, so I just know that what I, that what Faye Ann Potter told me about her brother, Buzz Aldrin, that they saw something on the way of the moon. Well, we, we pulled most of these images from sources like the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, which is uh, actually drawing them from the scanned high resolution NASA versions of all the handheld photography. Accomplishing this was considerably less simple. It meant showing that a brand new spacecraft, far more complicated than its predecessors, would operate so well it could be trusted to take men well beyond near-Earth orbit. We were that first crew that was going to get a chance to fly this vehicle and test this vehicle that was going to take human beings to the moon. Let's say we know all of these implications, and, and let's say it's 1960 and we know some of these things, right? Well, you think of the world back then. The world of 1960, no way would that world be ready for some of the intellectual realities of what we think we know now. Although it is presumed that the recordings were destroyed or lost, the transcriptions were made at NASA by the woman shown in this image and others. Which we might get in the mainstream media, the fact that we're not alone sometime in the future. These congressional hearings in which experiencers are going to test